Something I really like in all sorts of games are secrets. Whether they're just hidden easter eggs like Palutena's Guidance in Smash, or actual rewards like the countless hidden coin piles in Mario Odyssey. My love for secrets obviously comes through with me to Mario Maker 2 and the levels I make and play. Secrets are a fun way to expand upon your level or add some extra challenge to it. Personally, whenever I play levels or games in general, I like to look for as many secrets as possible because when they're done well, they can be super rewarding and fun to get, sometimes even more than just beating the level itself. So today I wanted to go over some strategies with you all on how you can incorporate secrets into your level to expand upon them and just make them more fun to explore. Before we start, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe, but with that out of the way, let's jump into some of my tips, tricks, and ideas on how to effectively put secrets in your levels in Super Mario Maker 2. First of all, let's discuss what can be rewarded to the players for finding secrets in your levels. I've separated them into two separate groups of rewards that I think can be given to the player. The first set are safe ones, items that will pretty much always work as a reward. These three items are coins, big coins, and one-ups. These can be helpful for players doing endless runs, but can also be fun to hunt for and try to collect otherwise. Just make sure that the reward scales with the difficulty of finding the secret. For example, you wouldn't want the secret to be super hard to find, or have it be a super hard alternate route to only get a single coin or something out of it. Give them a lot of coins or a good solid big coin as a reward for a hard secret. Now this group I feel can be pretty much used all the time. This second group though is a bit more situational. These three are power-ups, items like POWs, and shortcuts. The reason these are much more situational is because of the following. In order to upload a level in Mario Maker 2, it of course needs to be cleared by the person who made it from the start and every checkpoint. This can lead to hard levels taking a really long time sometimes to upload due to them of course being really difficult. This leads some creators to hide power-ups, items, or secret paths from themselves so that they don't have to actually beat their own level. It's safe to say that this practice is very frowned upon, but what does this have to do with our secrets? Well, even if your intentions with, say, hiding an invisible block here with a power-up aren't to choose your own level, it could come across that way to the players since they can't read your mind. To many players, rewards like this may sometimes appear as dev blocks or dev exits, so it's important to be very careful with how these items are hidden in your level. Obviously, these can work, but they just need to be done in the right way. So now that we've got our two groups of items that can be rewarded to the player, let's go over how to properly use them, starting with our second group. So as I said, power-ups and items can sometimes look like they were just there for the developer. So how can we still use them as secrets and make the players of the levels not feel like they were there for nefarious purposes? Well, I think a good one is hiding them in plain sight. What do I mean by this? Well, let's look at 1-1, you know, the level that everybody likes to remake with no changes for some reason. The level contains a lot of bricks, however, very few of them actually contain anything. This is our first item I think will work well as a secret holder. Many players aren't going to check every brick block in a given level, in fact, most won't. Most only at best check question mark blocks, so a brick block may be the best spot to hide a hidden item. This is way better than an invisible block, because unlike those, players that discover this secret were most likely looking for something, and were pleasantly surprised to find one. Whereas for invisible blocks, they would likely just stumble upon it and think to themselves something along the lines of, wow, this developer really tried to hide a power-up to cheat at their own level. Now when you do this, you have to be sure to not overload your level with bricks, and only minimally place items inside of bricks, that way that doesn't get oversaturated. Another way to give out secret items well is through a bonus room in a pipe. Usually these will contain coins, however power-ups I also feel work here for the same reason that bricks do. If the player found it, it was likely because they were looking for it, which means they won't feel like it was placed here for the developer, but rather the player. The final way you can do this is to have an alternative path that can be seen by the player that leads to the secret. This is a great place to hide secrets in general, but I also think it works great with power-ups. I want to make sure that I emphasize that these can be actually seen by the player, as if it's hidden behind, say, a hidden block, for example, then the item might as well just be inside that hidden block. If it's on a set of platforms off the beaten path, though, then it works actually pretty good as a secret. So in short, don't put these items in invisible blocks. Now as for the shortcut secrets, these of course offer a shorter path to the end of the level. Many of the same rules sort of apply here, hide them out in the open. Another thing you could do for these alternate paths is maybe make them harder than the normal way to go, but also shorter. This not only adds more to your level, but would likely make it a much more enjoyable thing to speedrun on top of that. Well, now that we've kind of discussed where we can hide some of these Group 2 items, let's go over where we can hide all of our secrets and how. First off, we have an item pretty much made for secrets, the Invisible Block. Now, as I said before, power-ups may not be something good to put in these, but a 1-up or a vine that leads to some coins is a very nice reward for these, as they don't help the developer in any way, just the player. Now, as for where to hide these, you can always just put them on the walls and rooms. Invisible blocks connected to the walls are fairly common in mainline Mario games, so this is a pretty good place to put them for those who are looking for them. 
Another thing that you could do is maybe have some sort of suspicious gap in a row of bricks or question mark blocks that make the player want to see if there's anything in that gap. Finally, you could have some sort of clues to hint at where they are. For example, if you use ground decoration sparingly, if at all, in your level, then maybe what you can do is place one underneath where an invisible block is, which will look out of place to observant players, which may make them want to test to see if there's an invisible block there. A more obvious hint could be a different block on the floor in that spot, or a really obscure one could be having the decorations inside of the floor lead to an invisible block, like the ground decoration I mentioned earlier. You can actually copy and paste these around, which means that you could have a row like this that could lead to an invisible block. All of these are good ways of not exactly giving away that there's something hidden there, but there are enough clues to lead players on a path of maybe discovering them, which can make them happy that they were able to find it. One important thing, though, is that you have to be very careful of where you use invisible blocks, as sometimes it could be possible that they could lead to a player's death. Take a look at what could have happened in this example I showed earlier. If they don't know that this block is here and they're trying to backtrack for whatever reason, then they may unexpectedly jump into the invisible block and fall to an unfair and frustrating death. It's best to keep them far away from ledges, however, if you can't really move them, then maybe what you could do is hide an additional secret down below with a big coin that's out of sight. Then you've got yourself two secrets for the price of one. But yes, just make sure invisible blocks like this can't kill the player or break the level in some way. Our next item to take a look at for secrets are pipes. These can lead to secret rooms or areas with a whole bunch of different rewards and secret challenges. There's a lot less to keep in mind with these than invisible blocks, however, I think there are a few cool things that you can do. For one, if you want to hint that there's a secret pipe in a certain area, make it a different color than the other ones in your level. Observant players may get curious and decide to check it out. Another somewhat subtle thing you can do is instead of resting it on top of ground blocks like other pipes, have it go all the way down as it implies to observant players that it will go down and lead somewhere. A final thing you could do is maybe have a sideways pipe be one block off the ground. Since players can't enter pipes like this without ground to stand on, this could lead to some sort of mini puzzle for the secret where they have to bring over, say, a crate to stand on. Now, of course, you could always just make the pipe just like every other pipe in your level, which still totally works as many players like to check those pipes anyways, so in that case you'll be rewarding exploration more than observation. When making an exit for these areas, you could just simply have them leave the way they entered, which I think is the most elegant solution, or you could have them go into another pipe that dispenses them out of the side so that they can't re-enter it. A problem with making a pipe exit is that sometimes the player can go back or enter through the back end, which is something you generally don't want to happen. The best way to get around this is of course to make the pipe inaccessible in some way. Next I want to discuss secrets that involve items. These can be rewarded to players that are either able to keep a power up through a difficult section, or to a player that decided to carry an item through a section. Let's just quickly go through some secrets that you could do for most of the power ups in the game. Like I said, these can be awarded to players who are able to keep their power up or use it in a unique way. This means that giving the player these power ups right before may not be the best strategy if it's meant to be a reward for keeping it. If it's a reward for the player using the power-up in a creative way, though, then feel free to give it to them right there. The mushroom is pretty easy, as if you're able to keep it, then you should allow the player to get a progressive power-up in order to do any of the secret things I talk about. If they aren't able to keep the mushroom, though, they'll still get another mushroom for a power-up, however, they likely won't be able to do the secret. The fire flower could be used to melt coins and ice blocks in order to reach a secret path, big coin, or maybe even a pipe if it's kept through a difficult section. A big mushroom could be used to break hard blocks or bricks below you, which could lead you to a similar thing that the fire flower did. Link's bombs are great for destroying some hard blocks to reveal a hidden room. The Mario 2 mushroom allows Mario to jump really high, which could lead to some coins. Same with this garbage as well. The Tanuki leaves are good for destroying bricks next to the player, so maybe you could have it destroy or open some sort of gate. This goes for capes as well, though just be careful that the player can't softlock themselves somehow due to the turn blocks only being able to be turned and not destroyed. Flight power-ups, which include the Tanuki Leaf, Cape, Pea Balloon, Propeller Mushroom, and Super Acorn are great ones for having secrets for those exploring. Placing a bunch of coins high in the sky or small hidden cubbies like this that give players 1-ups are great for power-ups like this, as when most people pick them up, they're going to want to fly with them, so giving them something to do while flying is a smart idea. These don't have to be rewards for making it through a difficult section with the power-up, as they work well just spread around the level. The Katsu can allow Mario to climb on either a wall or a semi-solid to reach some sort of secret area. The Super Hammer allows Mario to make crates, so maybe you could have the player need to build a small bridge across some lava to find a secret. Be sure to keep in mind that this should be short, as making a bridge for a long time only for it to be a secret can be frustrating to some. Making the secret visible before they build the bridge at all is also a good way to do this. Finally, the boomerangs from the boomerang flower are able to pick up and collect big coins and such, so just placing a big coin out of reach of Mario would do the trick. That's it for the power-ups I wanted to talk about, but let's go through a few items as well. Shells can be used to hit blocks from the side to either destroy them or get something from them. 
The shelmets can be used to bounce off of saws like this, which is really fun to do, by the way. Goomba shoes, Yoshi, and Drybone shells, Drybones for Smash, could be used to go across areas like munchers, spikes, and even lava in order to reach a reward. Additionally, big Goomba stilettos can grab pound through bullet blasters to go somewhere as well. The P-Switch's timer could be possibly used to reward the players for getting through a section quickly enough like this. Pals can be used to enter some sort of sideways pipes like the crates I mentioned earlier. Springs can obviously be used to reach higher places in a level for a secret as well. There are many, many more things you could do with items, I'll only be going over those for now, however, I highly suggest experimenting for yourself. Now, one item that I see used quite a bit as a reward are pink coins. These are good to replace star coins, since the level will always tell you how many there are in it, and you can also give the player a reward by giving them a key if they're able to get them all. The only thing with these are that it's never obvious if these are required to beat a level or are just secrets. Plus, if you use these, then you won't be able to use them anywhere else in your level. So for me personally, I don't like using these, however, I definitely think they can be used well, though I'm not really sure how to do that well myself. So if you want to use pink coins, be careful and maybe do your best to make sure that the player knows that they're optional. But anyways, that's it for this video. I love secrets and levels, and I think they're great for expanding upon a level's value, so I suggest looking into including them wherever you can. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more on Mario Maker 2 and anything else Nintendo Switch. I do want to mention that secrets shouldn't be required to beat a level. They're just supposed to be fun things that make the player want to explore and enjoy your levels further. And also, be sure to be creative with your level secrets. There are many, many more places you can hide them that I didn't even mention, like hiding them behind skewers and more. Also, I know that this is another relatively short video. I'm a bit busy at the moment, so these short videos may be more frequent for a bit, but I'll be doing my best to get those bigger videos out here soon. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time.